Well, hello you multi malleus malficarums, and thank you to Denev for the mop mention. Uh, for Ralphie Review, 953 extras. This is an extras review in which, having re reviewed a single malt, probably not always, but mainly, um, I'm giving extra information based on observations, chatting to people, experience, what I've observed over the years in different distilleries and bottling plants, and importantly, just sitting in bars with retired professionals, having bought them a drink, and then they just basically tell me, you know, the way, way it works. And um, my topic of conversation today is all the levels of whiskey filtration. Because it's very important for us to know this. And one of the reasons is, excuse me, I'll put my board up. There we go. Put that over there, a bit further over. But not as long as it doesn't topple, topple over, that's the main thing. And get my little chalk stick for pointing. There is an assumption amongst many whiskey drinkers when we're starting out that all whiskies are the same and the whiskies we buy in a supermarket or buy off the shelf in a bar or in some of the high street shops are just the way it is and we, ex we, we accept that because we don't know any better. But as we start to make this journey in smell and taste and this amazing complexity of experience, sensory experience, which is delivered through alcohol because it's one of the amazing properties of alcohol, is to lock up incredibly complex smells and tastes. Then, then we start to get our bearings. And one of the things that we soon discover is that some whiskies are apparently not chill filtered. Now, you never, ever, ever see whiskies advertised as chill filtered. Um, they never use that as a marketing ploy, do they? Have you ever seen a bottle where they proudly advertise in the front label that their whiskey is chill filtered for smoothness and perfection? Never, never, because they don't really want to advertise that because they know it's a negative. They really do. It doesn't matter to the passive consumer. The passive consumer is really just buying the brand for a very, very generalised experience. And frankly, good luck to them. There's no harm in that. But they're paying accordingly. That's just occasional buy. They don't put much money into the pot. You and I, if you're watching this video, you're putting more money into the pot. You're spending more money. You really want to know what you're buying. So in this video, I'm going to actually go through the stages from chill filtered to unchill filtered and beyond. I'm going to break it down for you simply so as that you can see that this is more complex than chill filtered and non chill filtered. And to start, I'm going to explain what chill filtration is. At the bottling plant, because there's very few distilleries as such have their own chill filtration unit. Whiskey is delivered from distillery warehouses to the bottling plant as economically and as sensibly as possible. At cask strength, in casks, or sometimes they'll use industrial bulk containers. Because you can do that with whiskey. You can. Except that when the whiskey's in the industrial bulk container, whether it be stainless steel or usually polyurethane, you, you can't, it doesn't age a day, it doesn't age a single minute. So it needs to be accompanied by paperwork showing exactly when it was decasked so that there's no misunderstandings, which can happen. So chill filtration at the bottling plant is where the whiskey is taken out the casks and it's put into a big stainless steel tanker. And that creates the batch. And then, at considerable cost, yeah, and it costs a lot of money. The whiskey is then reduced from its ambient environmental temperature of roughly 18 to 22 degrees Celsius down to about two, two and a half degrees Celsius. 
and when it's cold enough, and it can go colder, yeah, it's if, if the producers want, perfectly legal, you could chill that whiskey to minus 10, 15, 20 degrees if you wanted to, before you chill filter it, so as to get your resultant whiskey out the other end of the chill filtering machine absolutely sparkling clear. When the whiskey is then goes into and it's pumped under pressure through a pipe into a chamber containing between 10 and 200, sometimes more, sometimes, could be up to a thousand if you want. It really could. Fibrous paper sheets, like ceiling tiles really. And these are the strainers. These are the filters in which as the whiskey is pumped virtually frozen under pressure through these filters they catch all the solid particles including barley oil, long chain fatty acids and long chain proteins and more complex congeners. Congeners are basically flavours. Phenolic flavours, classic. This is why when particularly when you taste a heavily peated whiskey unchill filtered you immediately spot the difference between that and a chill filtered version and once you've had the unchill filtered version you never want to go back again to the chill filtered stuff you just don't because it's less that's all it is so that's chill filtration it happens to primarily to blended scotch whiskey which is fine because blended, blended scotch whisky is multitasking. It's mixing, it's a shot glass, it's a tumbler with ice. It's going to be mixed with ginger beer and Coca-Cola and all sorts of cocktails. You know, you get your, your whisky sour, your whisky mac. And for blended whisky, fine. I don't think any whisky drinker has a quibble about chill filtering it. But single malts are different. And I know that many of the volume producers want you to make cocktails out the single malts and buy the brand and fix in the brand and the quality of the brand and not the content. But I don't want you to be duped by that. They're just doing their job. They're marketing their product. Unfortunately, at times they do so carelessly and insensitively. So you have single malts which are routinely chill filtered and you tend to find that it's the big companies that do it, the big corporations, because they're putting out the volume and the one thing they want from all their volume of production is consistency. And the one consistent you can always guarantee to be accepted is the consistency of mediocrity. Every time you buy a, a chill filtered whiskey with caramel colourant, burnt sugar added, you're buying something that is less than it used to be, particularly if it's bottled at 40%. Now for many, many customers that doesn't matter, but you're watching our Alfie video. So I know, mock me, it matters to you. Then we move on to ambient filtering. This is where usually happens in winter time when the ambient temperature in the atmosphere is are not 22 degrees, but out in the warehouses where the whiskey's being stored, it's down to about eight to 10 degrees. So they'll say, I tell you what, we don't even have to chill the filter. Ch chill, we don't have to even chill the whiskey before chill filtering it. We'll just ambient filter it at the standard temperature without chilling it and save a bit of money on our energy costs. So they get virtually the same result. Different in the summer when the ambient temperature is a lot higher. It can be up to 22, sometimes 30 degrees at the night of summer if it's a particularly sunny day in a big modern industrial warehouse bottling plant. So at that point then they would chill filter. But as well as chill filtration you get ambient filtration which is basically the chill switched off. And then you get partial ambient. So partial ambient would be perhaps removing some of the filters, perhaps even increasing the temperature of the whiskey slightly if it's cool and saying, right, well, I tell you what, we don't want it stripped of the 
oils and the consciousness. We want just a little bit of haze in there. Just enough haze that people aren't going to complain. Not that anybody does. And anybody that does knows nothing about whiskey and should be buying vodka instead to simplify their lives. Yeah, I know that sounded snooty, snobby, arrogant and opinionated, but hey ho, there you go. No, so sad, too bad, moving on, never mind. It gets that stage that, you know, as, as you become a grumpy old git like me, you get like this. So you've got this partial ambient filtered. So essentially the whiskey may be raised slightly in temperature. It's going through the filtration process, but perhaps depending on the results they're looking for, they'll simply use fewer filters. So that in the fewer filters that they use, the faster the whole process becomes. So it's economical that way as well. Then we have barrier filtered. Barrier is where they use not a standard large commercial chill filtration machine, but they use a smaller version of it, which again contain a variety of filters. It can contain fine filters or coarse filters. It can contain sieve filters or strainer filters. And this is basically designed on an industrial scale, a small industrial scale to remove the particles from whiskey, the specks of sawdust or carbon, little flecks of hessian from the bung wrap, um, any little shards of wood that are in the cask lying in the cask that have get mixed up as the cask was decanted. And that is barrier filtering. Barrier filtering can be many things, but generally we can assume that it isn't full-scale chill filtration or ambient chill, chill filtration. It's a simplified industrial procedure. And then we move on to what you and I are looking for in a whiskey. Really, we are. We're looking for the multi-sieve filtered. Now, this is where you replace pushing the whiskey through uh, a tube into a box containing filters by just pouring, pouring under gravity whiskey first through a coarse, a really coarse strainer and then through a finer strainer and then finally through a, a very fine strainer. Basically an industrially sized version of what you would use as a kitchen strainer at home. Now this is done at room temperature, there's no chill filtration going on. I mean if the distilleries, this is distilleries that bottle their own and small independent bottlers who bottle their own. They keep things simple because their market is focusing on the quality end of presentation. So they keep things simple and that keeps things cost effective so that when we're buying their product we are not paying the extra premium for the industrial cosmetics yeah cosmetology right the powder and pasting the tarting up of the the raw natural real product then finally the best of all the absolute pinnacle of whiskey presentation is straight from the cask out a out a suction tube out a valanche out a siphon anything particularly distillery open days, they'll roll out a cast, they'll open it up, you'll get your bottle, it'll have bits in it, it'll have, have sawdust in it, it'll have little particles of charcoal in it from the s s roasting of the, of the inside of the cask, it'll have bits of hessian in it, it'll have sediment in it, and that'll go in, it'll settle down at the bottom of the bottle, and it's this, this is what you want. You want it even better if you can literally fill that bottle straight out the cask in the warehouse itself. That is the ultimate presentation in a bottle of whiskey. There is nothing beyond that. In a warehouse with a valanche or a siphon and a jug and a bottle and you pour it in through your wee straight, through your wee funnel 
right? Then you pour the remainder back in the cask, you pop the cork on, you label it, preferably handwritten, on the official paper, and then the tax stamp goes on, chunk, because it's a legal requirement in the UK to show that customs and excise duty has been paid. And there you have it. That, that, is, that's what we aspire to. A word of warning, right? And I'm the one to tell you this. See when you visit distilleries and have the, they have their cask in the shop and it's the distillery only bottling. Never ever presume that it hasn't been chill filtered. Never presume it's come straight from the warehouse as is simply because it's in a cask. I'll tell you what a number of distilleries do and you need to know this. They go to the bottling plant with a nice clean cask that's been rinsed out and all the bits are removed and it's a nice looking cask. It looks clean, it looks fresh, it looks cosmetic, it was cosmetically pleasing. And they take that to the bottling plant and the whiskey could have been chill filtered, yeah they could have, and they put it, fill up that cask and they take it back to the, to the distillery to go in the shop. That cask could be lined with plastic for all you know. See, it's why you go into the distillery shop and if you can't smell whiskey, that should be a suspicious, that should be a suspicious thing to you. Wherever you have a cask of whiskey, you should have the smell, slight ambient smell of whiskey. And if cask looks too cosmetic and pleasing, particularly, my goodness heaven help us, if it's been varnished on the outside, you're dealing with theatre. You're not dealing. You're not dealing with what you really want to be dealing with. And frankly, you'd be better walking away and finding something from a small independent bottler, which has got more integrity and more honesty about it. So be very, very careful what you buy at distilleries as distillery-only bottlings. And I'm not just talking about Scotch whisky. I'm talking about global whisky industry. Any distillery anywhere in the world, you need to know this. And I'm just telling you, so as you know. And I'm Ralphie. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, pick up your piece of chalk and press the subscribe button to my channel. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out. Because I've been shadow banned, you see, during the year. So even people subscribed to me have not been getting notified. But things are changing, you see. Some of the old faithful channels that just keep grinding on, that just keep doing, the, doing what they do coming back into favour because it's because it's information and it's I like to well I like to think it's quality and it's there's a, a relative consistency and there you have it you'll you'd never see anything like this in the BBC the British Broadcasting Company or any other terrestrial television network they simply won't tell you this this is why you come to the internet to find what you really need to know because what you need to know, you just won't get through through the old medias. <laughs> Have a lovely evening, a lovely day, and we'll see you soon, mate. Bye bye.